Okay, we're live. This is our presentation on All God's Children, the Bosquet Family, and the American Tradition of Violence by Fox Butterfield. So here we have the main characters of the story, the Bosquet men, the Bosquet family, and includes Pud Bosquet, um, his son, James Bosquet, his son, Butch Bosquet or Willie Sr., and then his son, Willie Bosquet or Willie Jr. Part one of the story contains a lot of contextual history and background information about the Bosket family, who is of course the main family in the story. It talks a lot about slavery and slave culture in the South as pertaining to the relationship between whites and blacks in South Carolina specifically, and the hardships that were faced by the oppressed. It talks a lot about how um, violent the culture was in certain parts of South Carolina, um, such as Edgefield and Saluda County where the Boskets got their start, which really sets the stage for how Pud was raised and surrounded by violence and crime and the struggles that he faced. We learn a lot about the Bosquet family roots and how they got their start and made a name for themselves, which wasn't necessarily a good name. Um, and pers specifically pertaining to Pud, um, who had a major reputation in his town that kind of jump started the name that was made for the Bosquet men to follow James, Butch, and Willie. He had a really like what they would call, he was like a bad man, like someone that you didn't want to step to, or he would like, you know, handle the problems. And he was like really violent and that sort of thing, um, which, you know, leads into the next part of the story. And in relation to this class, um, part one really sets the stage for how the trauma aces and life experiences of the men really come into play. So part two of the story introduces us to James and Butch, who are father and son. And here we learn about their relationship. And in doing so, we begin to see how the patterns of ACEs and generational trauma begin to form and shape these men's lives. Um, not really trying to spoil the story, but um, at the end of part one, um, Pud dies. And so James really felt that you know, and he had to live up to his father's name. Like he was a bad man, he was violent. Um, anyone who like kind of stepped to him were like, you shouldn't really do that. And so he really, James felt like he really had to live up to this name, be a hard, um, violent man. And he wanted people to be scared of him. So it kind of became this self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and as I mentioned, Pud did die. So James didn't really have a father to give him that nurturing and um, loving, warm, like fatherly love. And so he, in that he wasn't really able to be a father himself on top of, you know, trying to be this, you know, big bad man. So Butch experiences many things in his life, such as violence and neglect and physical abuse and really falls into the same pattern of delinquency and crime as his father, James, again, just trying to, you know, fulfill that role. Um, and here we learn about what happens when aces get too high, when you experience too many aces. As it, growing up, um, Butch did experience many aces that in turn led him to where he ended up in a cycle and life of violence, crime, and incarceration. And so in relation to this class, part two really tells the story of how a person is made and shaped um, by their environment and their life circumstances. And um, there were ACEs experienced by all of these men that contributed to how aspects such as anger, violence, and revenge come to develop. And the ACEs that were experienced by Butch spe specifically, but really by all the characters include physical abuse, neglect, parental substance abuse, and things that should be included in the ACE measure that we talked about in class, such as community violence, family, economic instability, and racial victimization. Okay, so in part three, 
begins talking about Butch and how he begins his life like in and out of different institutions and he gains a reputation for being a really violent kid. He's sent to places like the Harlem Children's Center and they didn't want to deal with him and he eventually finds himself incarcerated. And so while he's incarcerated, his son Willie is born and they don't have a relationship because Butch is behind bars and so Willie is a really rambunctious kid. He's always getting himself into different situations and into trouble. He earns himself the nickname Booby because he sets a lot of booby traps. And while he's like this kid running around, his mom, Laura, suffers from depression. And so that's one ace in his life is um, SMI. And so because his mother, Laura, was kind of neglectful because she was dealing with her depression, he grew up learning like the neighborhood language and began channeling his time and energy into acts of violence like his father, which like like Butch earned Willie a violent reputation. And so Willie was moved from institution to institution because the staff at each institution were unsure how to treat him. And then it most of most of part three also talks about Willie's experience in different care centers. Willie commits really violent acts like murder and assault. And I believe robbery in this part. And so these acts of violence all come from some of his aces, like witnessing abuse, his mother being depressed, growing up in an unsafe environment. There's substance abuse also going on. And a lot of this contributes to Willie's behavior. In part four, Butch started going to uh, started taking school level courses in English and American history while in prison, and he started falling in love with academia. And during this time, he even gained a short term friend in prison that had like a stabilizing effect on Butch. And after this friend left, um, Butch went back to his like bad habits and he even tried to escape from prison a couple of times. Um, he returned to street life because it was all he knew. He craved excitement. Um, and he recognized that in the civilian world, he would be rejected despite all his effort to reform himself through education. So he decided to live by his own code. And soon enough, um, Butch was sent back to prison. Only this time he was given the chance to revive his dream of earning a college degree. While in prison, Butch was awarded a bachelor's degree of arts and he became the first and only prisoner to be elected into Pi or Phi Beta Kappa. Um, the story here um, then shifts back to Willie and over the years, Willie had built an idealized portrait of his father in his mind and he thought of Butch as a big time criminal. And here you can see how violence was kind of um, idealized. They began to exchange letters and for Butch, the relationship with his new son or his son was um, becoming painful as it was as though somebody held a mirror up to his own life. And um, Butch was older and burdened with the knowledge of age. He thought he had a way he thought he found a way out of prison through academia and Willie was still young during this time and full of the invincibility of youth and saw everything as a contest to become the most violent man on the street, just as his father once had. Um, Willie's rage at his father for neglecting him for so many years was multiplied by his disappointment. The way Willie saw it, he was now tougher than his father and his father could not beat nor threaten him, and therefore Willie could not respect him. Um, Willie was released from prison. However, with his past, he got caught up in an assault and was sent back to prison shortly after. And this is the end of uh, part four. The final part is part five. Um, in this part, Butch is finally set free from prison and that he's able to live a normal life. But instead of deciding to go to a halfway house or somewhere that can help him, he decides to move in with a girlfriend. Um, at this point, Butch really sees women as something that he can use for his 
own gain and this gain is having a house. Um, he goes back to a life of crime and actually ends up assaulting his girlfriend's daughter, which leads him to go back to prison and go back to court. Um, he realizes that because he assaulted a child, he will be seen as like the low of the low when he gets back to prison and he'll have prisoners ganging up on him. He's not going to look like this bad, cool guy anymore because he assaulted a child. So he decides to try to escape from prison with his girlfriend and actually ends up dying in a police shootout um, after murdering his, at the time, girlfriend. So Willie from prison learns about this and it kind of sets him off to be like, well, I'm this bad guy too. He now respects his father again because he died in a police shootout. And this leads Willie to want to live the rest of his life in the, in the prison system and taking advantage of prison however he can get it. So he begins assaulting guards in any way he can and adds years upon years into his sentence. He actually goes as far as to almost murder a guard. I think he was about one inch off from murdering a guard by stabbing. And he continues to add years onto his sentence and currently he is still in jail. He would have been released from jail by now if it weren't for his um, assaulting of officers. And he blames the system for this and the system raising him. Um, it's kind of a sad story because Willie will be in prison for the rest of his life because of these charges. However, I wanted to take a little look at resilience on a brighter note, because at the very end, there's a little paragraph about Willie's sister, who um, experienced a lot of the same ACEs that Willie went through, even some other ones. Um, obviously, they were raised by an abusive mom, but his sister was also in an abusive relationship as a teenager with a much older man who assaulted her multiple times. And it really looked at some parts like Cheryl, his sister, was going to end up just like Willie and be in prison. And Willie did have other sisters that ended up as juvenile delinquents as well. But Cheryl ended up finding a very supportive partner and moving to Pennsylvania. And she's now just a normal suburban soccer mom. So even though she grew up in the same way as Willie, she had that one supportive person in her life that kind of helped her move away from all her child adverse child experiences and is now successfully raising children on her own and breaking the cycle of abuse. So um, just wanted to end on a little note of hope. There may not be hope for Willie, but there are some people in his family that are living good lives So. So finally, a little bit about the article we chose. Um, we cho It's titled Adverse Child Experiences and Adult Criminality, How We Must Live Before We Possess Our Own Lives. And it discusses the link between experiencing ACEs in relation to mental illness and violence. Um, in this study, there were 151 incarcerated males from, from four different groups of offenders. There was non-sexual child abusers, domestic violence offenders, sexual offenders, and stalkers. And they were sent to an outpatient clinic as the result of their conviction um, and were compared to a normative sam sample. Offenders completed the ACE questionnaire during the course of their treatment. The results indicated that offenders reported experiencing higher levels of ACEs compared to the normative population and were less likely to report having no ACEs at all. So this is very relevant to the book that we just discussed because the link between ACEs and violence. The results in the article suggested a strong relationship between reporting having experiences ACEs and many other forms of pathology, including aggressive behavior later in life. It's consistent from what we see in the book as many of the characters experiences ACEs such as physical abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, et cetera, and experiences negative outcomes as a result of particularly violence. Um, specifically, as an example, we can see that in Willie's case, um, Willie was really involved in street life. He also experienced sexual abuse by his grandfather, parental incarceration, 
and became a very violent individual. Obviously, he stole, he robbed innocent people, he shot innocent people, um, he assaulted multiple guards, he tried to murder a guard, and he um, tried to assault people in the multiple juvenile institutions he was in. And here we can see the link between ACEs experience and violent outcomes later in life, just like the people in this prison population in this study. Um, and yeah, Willie obviously also ended up being incarcerated for the, his crime. So it's very similar and kind of proves Willie's behavior. All right, so I would recommend this book for anyone who's interested in reading books on topics like generational trauma. It's really well written and it's really hard to put down once you guys get past the first part. It's also incredibly topical because it deals with things like police brutality and racial issues that we're still facing today. And so with today's political climate and the call for change, it's a really good read. I would also definitely recommend this book for other students or anyone to read. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's really hard to put down, like Jordana said, after you get past the first part. But the story as a whole is very captivating and intriguing. And at times, you know, when you just get that glimmer of hope that things might turn around or things might go better, it's really heartwarming and inspiring. Um, it's relation to ACEs, whether you're reading it for that specific reason, like we were for this class or not, is really powerful and educational. And I believe that this book has a lot to offer um, as both an educational and a pleasurable read. Um, I also agree with what they said. I would also recommend this book. It started off a little slower for me, but it became more and more engaging. Um, it adds a lot of insight that I, I didn't have before about topics like systemic racism, police brutality, gener and generational trauma. And it did that through the lens of real people. Something that we kind of like talked about was like, I can't believe like Willie is a real person just because um, we've never had to experience many of the things that he has to experience but it kind of shows you like all these topics through the lens of a real person. And it kind of like, it kind of changed a lot of my viewpoints on it. So I thought it was definitely worth the read. And I definitely recommend the book also. Uh, it gives out a lot of background information about the history of violence and how it stemmed from the South and how generational trauma has worked its way into the community today. And I feel like it's important to both recognize this and to keep it in mind. So, that is the end of our presentation. Thank you.